and welcome to the Melrose Minute. I'm Mayor Jen Grigoritis bringing you news you can use from City Hall. And I'm joined today by a, a returning guest, Superintendent John Macero. Welcome, Superintendent. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to have you back. So wanted to catch folks up on a topic that's on many, many folks' mind, which is the FY25 school budget. So FY25 is next year, the school year that will start in Correct. September. Correct. So since we last talked a few months ago, what has happened? So since we last talked, we talked about um, what we had requested mm -hmm. in the needs-based budget which ended up being about fifty million nine nine three eleven dollars and seventy nine cents. Can't forget that. But since then, the reality has come through of what where we're at for Melrose um, and funding purposes. And right now, our budget is looking at with the total offsets accounts and what the city can contribute. It's about forty seven million dollars. So that's saying that we are four point two million dollars in a deficit of okay. what we would currently have had of what our projected needs were. So that puts us in a very difficult situation as we move towards next year. Okay, so yeah, obviously there's a, there's a big gap there, $4.2 million, not money that you and I both know we can make up with no. state aid or no. a grant. Um, you know, when you live in a residential community like we do, we're really bound by Proposition 2.5, which limits our new um, tax increase to 2.5% a year, which doesn't always meet um, the percentage of growth of our needs. So. Correct. Can you talk a little bit about the school committee has passed a budget for Correct. next year based yes. on the known amount of money we have available for the schools. Can you talk about what that's going to look like for the schools next year, that, the budget that was passed? Sure. So originally when we, when we realized those were the numbers, we went back and we took a look at what positions would we be able to continue on with, what positions would we not be able to have. And if you recall, one of the things that I did talk about was that the middle school was needed to be right-sized. Mm -hmm. So regardless of where we were at, the priorities have been for next year's school budget. We need to fix the middle school. We needed to create a uh, program for our uh, special education program uh, for students so that we could keep in district. And then we were looking at how could we put more special education teachers in because we knew that that was something that was also a priority. If you do that, though, that worked with the needs-based budget, but once now that those reductions came in, we still needed to do that, but now that was mean we were going to be, there was going to be implications all around. So what has happened for those implications is after all of that and we went through and started to reduce this position or reduce those various positions, our first initial crack at it, we had 58.6 positions that were going, removed from that budget. Now, out of that 58.6 positions, only about, there was about 25, 27 positions that were new positions that we were creating. If you recall, at the middle school, we, we were creating over 15 positions. So by putting those 15 positions in, though, it has decreased me to have to take positions from other areas. So we're looking at, on top of that, we were looking at probably the removal of having to let go up to 15 people after I started to move things around. So the 58.6 was the original mm -hmm. amount, but then the school committee, before we did the final vote, had asked, could we come back with some options? And we took a look at some options that said, all right, what if we have this program versus that program? Do we, our kindergarten numbers were a little lower this year for registration, so do we reduce one of those classes? And what does those class sizes look like? Well, after doing all of that, we got that 58.6 down to 57 okay. positions. So that's, that's key um, of where we're at. But that is still, that's pretty devastating for what you know, Melrose is used to as we move forward on these things. So right now, working in the funding that we have mm -hmm. for next year, we're looking at district-wide a loss of about how many um, staff across our school building. So right now we're looking at about <clears throat> anywhere between 15 to 17 positions. Your staff. Okay, yeah. so that absolutely, and what kind of impact will that have? Well, it'll have a big impact because what that impact will be is at the elementary levels, we're going to be eliminating some sections per grades at some of the schools. I do know that Winthrop is affected by that, uh, Lincoln, uh, Roosevelt, uh, Hoover School. Those schools, um, not Roosevelt, I'm sorry, um, Hoover, Lincoln, and Winthrop 
have less sections in per certain grades, so that means that those class sizes are going to be larger. They could be anywhere from between 26 to 27. Um, the other impact that you're going to see is you're going to also lose out on some of those support systems that we're trying to build in for our, our students because it's so needed. And I think that people have to realize that we're still in that recovery mode from COVID. Yep. And I think that that's important. And I know a lot of people tend to think that, oh, well, COVID's over. It is, but these students, the, the effects of what they've had to go through, through their education is much different than what you and I've gone mm -hmm. through. And so therefore, that's something that we have to really understand. And so when you start to increase those class sizes and you start to take those services away, there's going to be some issues. Okay. And what will it look like at the secondary campus? So we've talked about, obviously, the identified needs at the middle school, which is going to be a building next year with over 900 students. That's correct. In it. So absolutely a need for resources. What do we see? How do we think this is going to impact the high school? So the high school is going to be impacted because what's going to happen there is we had to make some reductions there. So, so the, um, you're looking at one less section in history. You're looking at a less section in math that was projected that we wanted. You're looking at some special education positions that may not, uh, they will not be um, funded. So what happens there is that those class sizes are going to increase. And there are um, lots of particular, you know, issues because high school students are now starting to really take a look at where they're moving and what the, the ideas of what they want that are going to help them to go to college. And so the last thing we want to do is have to eliminate a class mm -hmm. because that class is important for that child as they move forward. So you're going to see effects there that are going to um, affect what's happening. The middle school, we have added those positions there because the middle school right now is an area of deep concern. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is where our, our lowest performance is, and it's because we don't have the right amount of people there. So, so making some hard choices, and I, they Very were hard, hard as a member of the school committee, to, uh, to really focus on right-sizing the middle school to bring that, that building up to where it needs to be, but recognizing that without additional revenue, that has impacts across the rest of the district as well. Right, and, and, and the other areas that have very big impacts too um, is the fact that we have, we've eliminated administrative positions. Mm -hmm. I think people need to realize that, and sometimes people say, well, what do they do? They're a huge impact on our teachers being able to get the services that they need, the evaluation process, the professional development, all of those things that keep us moving in the, in the positive direction that Melrose has done so well. Mm -hmm. So those, 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 those are other <clears throat> impacts. And, and in those particular areas, you're decreasing from a, from a crew of 23 down to 17. You know? So I just want people to understand that that all has an impact. Right, there's definitely going to just be less overall next Correct. year. So I know we're committed to providing great services no matter the budget, but hopefully we can see you know, a, different, a different course for the schools next year. Um, so in terms of what happens next, and I know lots of folks are paying attention to this and have reached out already with questions and concerns. Um, I'll be presenting the budget for the whole city, which will include the schools, to the city council. Um, on May 6th, and then you will have an opportunity to come before the council to talk about your budget in June, June. June 10th. June 10th, so that's another opportunity for folks to hear more about the school budget, and then obviously the council will weigh in on the bottom line of that proposed budget. Correct, and I would also, if anybody's watching us and wants to know more about the school budget, I would really tune into the last two school committee mm -hmm. meetings that we had. Uh, I believe it was April 23rd meeting. We also had the April 25th meeting, and before that, um, the April 9th meeting. I think that those are really uh, key to get an idea of the, the, the bigger impacts that's happening within the school budget. Right, lots of important information out there, thanks partly to our friends at MMTV and also the great work of you and your team. We'll make sure that those links are, people can see those while they're watching this and hopefully check out more information. So anything else you wanna share as we wrap up this budget process? You no, know, I just want, I want people to be informed. I, I'm available if anybody has any questions uh, concerns about how we're moving forward. I do want to thank your team and my team for the work that they've been doing and trying to get all of this information out. Um, as we stated before, and I'll just remind the public as we talked about it, when I came on board in September or July, it's almost been a year, believe mm -hmm. it or not, but when I came on in July, people wanted to know what is it going to take 
to have a needs-based budget. What is it going to do? We've created that document. We know what that document looks like. Uh, people seem to be very appreciative of that document. Mm -hmm. We'd love to fund that document because we know that Melrose is a district that is moving in the right direction. I mean, clear case, we were the you know, top 60 with the 60th in the state. That's, we've increased yep. greatly on that. Um, and so we're moving in that direction. And we, the last thing we want to do is, is move ourselves in the other direction. Absolutely. So I so appreciate you taking the time and for, you know, really telling the community what it is we need for our school district. I know it set us up for some hard conversations, but also for some opportunities for the community to tell us where they want to see things go. So I really, I want to say thank you to you for that. Well, thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, always, anytime.